Hello. Okay. So yeah, this is another uh, program in progress uh, programming stream. Um, tonight I'm going to do a little bit of refactoring on the matchmaking on the uh, the rock paper scissors uh, application. I'm going to level with you. I haven't got much prepared, um, and I know I've been off for a few weeks as well. As soon as I announce my uh, plan to do a uh, stream every Sunday, I end up being away for three weeks. Um, a couple of those weeks I wasn't uh, near an internet connection, um, and there's been a lot going on. So um, so tonight, yeah, I'm just going to probably do quite a short stream, just kind of trying to refactor the... Uh, the uh, just, It's called the Matchmaker Service on the server side. Um, it's kind of become like a bit of a monolithic ball of mud so my aim for the stream will just be to pick it apart, separate some concerns out and just make it work nicer. <laughs> so um, this might not be a long stream. Um, I'm going to hopefully have some more stuff planned. Um, one of the big things I want to tackle is um, working on the front end. But, and also getting some really good uh, test integration there. I have done some, I've written some tests, um, some unit tests, but uh, the focus of this stream will be to pick apart the uh, matchmaker service. I also can't uh, guarantee it's going to be successful, because this is completely unplanned. I haven't done, unfortunately haven't done much prep, so we'll just see how it goes. Anyway, um, welcome everybody to the stream. Um, I hope it's nice and clear and Everything's fine. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's go on. There we go. So um, a new addition to the, the setup as well as I've got a camera for the desk. So if I have any um, sort of things to knock down or any diagrams to draw, I can sort of write everything out as I see it and it's on here. So that will be good. Hopefully we can use that tonight. Okay. So yeah, we've got our decision maker. Decision maker. We've got our matchmaker service here. And one thing that kind of irks me is that the logic for the uh, setting the socket server up, the logic for matching the players, and also just the general sort of like tracking of the players is all just kind of like one big thing and uh, while I was off off stream just make sure I've got the right uh, build here because um, there's one really monolithic uh, yeah okay so I did separate this out a little bit so prior to during last stream most of this was in just one massive uh, function where it was like nested uh, listeners. So instead of having like on register player, on player disconnected, register listeners, everything was just kind of like deeply embedded and we had code going across to here, um, which wasn't very good. So what I did on kind of off stream, because it's kind of boring to be honest, is, is uh, separate everything out into nice separate functions in the class but it still kind of irks me that a lot of these concerns aren't separated into their own classes so I want to do something about that and like I said I'm not exactly sure I didn't I haven't planned this out so there might be a lot of like um and an ah and, and thinking but I thought it was probably worth doing a stream since I haven't done one for a few weeks and I kind of want to get back into the rhythm of it so yeah Okay, so um, I guess we should just sort of start with step one. Let's get this socket server out out of this service. I think that's probably the, the main thing that we want to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a socket service, something that can wrap everything to do all this stuff. I think once I can get that out, then I can think about pulling some of this other functionality out. Because this is a matchmaker service, they shouldn't match players, it shouldn't manage 
all the other stuff. So why don't we write down some of the concerns that we have here? Let's turn this in, I'll pad around. thing we have is um, establishing a connection. Try that again, Mike. Between players. That's like client so yeah this is the basic model we've got a client and we have a client here and we have a server and the idea is that we're trying to match these players together and communicate via WebSocket so one concern is establishing a connection between players And then the other thing is uh, matching players. So that's like taking two players and, and making them part of a session. And then the other thing is sort of the general logic of the game, like uh, All the stuff like making decisions, which we have in a decision maker service, but just general gameplay, I feel should be in its own its own service. So there's definite room for improvement. I'm thinking, you know, roughly I think we should have we should have some kind of socket service which is injected into the matchmaker Also remember that we do have a, a main sort of an entry point so rather than just instantiating one service here we could have several services that manage the flow of different uh, parts of the application so at the minute we just create a matchmaker which contains a socket so like basically establishes the sockets uh, connection and we do all the like gameplay logic and stuff. So what I'm thinking is we have some kind of a. These will have a dependency on each other, but instead what we'll do is we'll inject the socket service into the matchmaker. So it'll have a much looser coupling. And then we need to kind of decide where the list of players will be maintained.
So we're adding players there. And we're storing their uh, socket IDs and their uh, username. So. I wonder if we could maybe drag this out. Um, just try to think whether the matchmaker should be responsible for storing the uh, players, for storing the uh, players, active players, or whether that should sit outside of that service. So we have the concept of players and sessions. Okay, so yeah, I think we should have a socket service. I think what we would need to do is we need to create some kind of uh, method that allows you to listen on the connection. And that should be the only sort of association between the socket service and the matchmaker service. Let's, let's start by doing that. Let's see how that could work. Let's say if we try and do this part first, hopefully the rest will fit together. All right, I'll just change the code view.
So what makes a socket service a socket service? A socket IO server, an express application, a server. Yep, so I believe that all these part all these parts are applicable to creating a server. So we'll put those in there. So you probably want to take these here. And copy them over. So yeah, I think we should pass in some kind of a function here. So we can say something like okay, connection listener. So I don't know in TypeScript if this is valid. No. Can you just put an interface for a function in? Oh, that's interesting. Okay, let's how we do that. Let's see how that works. So what it's going to do is it's going to delegate or it's going to call back to whichever services uh, uses this uh, socket service. Okay, and so in our constructor we're going to uh, run those functions. Yeah, so what I'm trying to do now is just pull that code out, pull that code out of, uh, of the uh, matchmake service. I just don't think it's appropriate to be in there. Oh, so we put listening there.
gonna have to pass in some kind of function. I'm not exactly sure if it's going to work or not, but let's, let's give it a go. Everything seems to check out when it comes to type checking, so... Yeah, the idea is I just want to take this bit of functionality and I want to wrap it into a socket service instead of having it in the uh, matchmaker service. So let's say we get rid of this. Play connect. It's a function. service we need and creating the abstractions and then forgetting how they work okay so now we have socket service so my plan is to remove those Play connect so applies to just remove any reference to uh, the web sockets as you can see here these are no longer used so <coughs> I wonder why IO is still used this dot IO dot sockets connected emit so, the minute we're still dependent on socket IO within here. But let's see. Declare it never used. Well, it is. As it turns out. We, we know that uh, it will call this function here. So let's see if everything's functioning as expected. PM run build. takes a little while sometimes. Okay, so let's check to see if this build works correctly. got an error. 
Gallery property port of undefined. Yeah, so there's a missing reference there. It's not actually that important. Uh, I could pass it through in the callback, but... At the moment, I'm just gonna remove it. Do another build. Hopefully this one will be a little bit more successful. Right, so it's, oh, it's failed again. This is probably a scoping issue. Yeah, this won't be this. This will be this in this uh, class, the scope. So what we need to do Hmm. We need to get the scope from this class so that this is this. will probably do it. I'll give it a go. There might be a more elegant solution to this than using a bind, but oh, that's meant to be a build. Right, running a build. seems to have worked, that's good. Okay, so we have our uh, two players. Let's see if we can get them to connect still. Uh, it looks like things failed. Properly sockets of undefined. On register player.
sockets of undefined. Ah, this dot IO dot sockets. The reason for that is because we don't connect on that anymore. So what I think we're gonna need for our socket servers is a getter to return the sockets properly. Yeah, that's what we're gonna have to do. So we'll say public get sockets. And it's gonna return this IR sockets. Later along the line, uh, we may need to. Ah. I say that's instantiating that. Oh, okay. So, what we need to do is say init sockets here. This makes more sense actually, because we're setting the sockets up. So then if we get sockets, then you can return it to the uh, calling class. So instead of io.sockets, this is going to be this dot socket service. Uh, this dot socket dot sockets. So we may want to provide uh, helpers for this rather than, or uh, methods rather than trying to return the object of the socket. So anywhere where it says this dial of sockets. I think that should resolve any sort of scoping issues that we had there. So let's give that another build. Yeah, so the aim of this is to just simplify this class. Uh, this class is doing too much. It should be, everything should be split and separated by concern. So I'm just trying to get all the, all of the uh, socket IO relate stuff out into its own service. With a bit of luck this is gonna this is gonna build and everything's gonna work correctly. Okay, let's just refresh this. So now Mike versus Mork. And it looks like the matching's working again. Yep, everything seems to be working correctly again, so that's good. Made a little bit of progress there. Cool. All the output looks good, so... <clears throat> that seems to be working as we expect. And we've been able to take all the uh, socket behaviour out. Or the majority of the socket behaviour out. And put it into its own class. So yeah, places where we still use still use the uh, socket IO related stuff. We get the connected sockets and then emit a message. So I feel like we could probably simplify this with a, a a helper, or rather a getter. So yeah, it's used in seven places. So what we could do.
go. So instead of using that uh, triple barrel name, what we can do now is just use sockets dot connected clients. Make sure that hasn't broken anything. Oh, this always happens. The uh, server just stops you from just turning the process off. So we're going to have to trash that. Want to build? I don't know why I didn't just call that socket service. I'm gonna definitely gonna rename that. It's a lot easier to read. Whereas I just got this little socket. It sounds more like a, a an object. I mean, it is an object, but it's an instance of our uh, service. Start our service up. Scissors. Yeah, that's a draw. Paper versus scissors. That's a win. Okay, so everything's still working as expected, which is great. So we've been able to move out most of the socket logic into the socket service. I can rename that. There we go. So I'm thinking rather than Restricting ourselves by having creating the socket service inside the matchmaker, I'd much rather inject it into the constructor from outside so that other services could make use of the socket. And with it being with it being the socket server, um, I think basically it would make sense for each of the services to share the same instance. So. I'm thinking my next move will be to create this outside of this because we only have one dependency and that's that callback there. I think what we can do is we can use the observer pattern to add listeners to the socket service instead of uh, having to pass in during the uh, during during construction of the of the of the class of the object rather. So let's move this up one level, going into the server, and we're going to do an import here. Oh, the IntelliSense isn't being very helpful today. Oh, 
There it is. Okay, so what we can do instead of passing all the stuff here in the matchmaker, because the matchmaker doesn't really need to know about the app or the port or anything, what we can do is we can instantiate it here. It's, it's looking a little bit more solid now, split everything up. And we can pass in app and port. Also, we didn't delete the thing that I uh, was trying to do there. <laughs> okay, so. Just take that. I want socket service. Equals new socket service. And we pass those in as arguments. And that way, we create this. We won't need to pass any of those dependencies in. So, at the moment. So, this should be like a demonstration that, you know, you don't always have to have the, the whole answer up front. So, as you need to just kind of. When, you, when you're doing refactoring, you just take things step by step. You make sure everything still works and you just work from there. It can be a little bit tedious, but, you know, you get there in the end. It's like taking a piece of marble and just chipping away at it. So, that's just something to keep in mind. You don't have to aim for perfection uh, immediately. Um, things will improve in time. And once you have something working, then it's just kind of easier to work towards and even better. So previously, we we're going to pass that callback in or that yeah that, f that function pointer. So what we can do now is we can take this out. Yeah, let's take it out fully. And instead of passing a port and an application in we can just pass in a socket service. So, and then what we're doing is we're doing a little bit of dependency injection. Instead of having to tightly couple everything together. So any concern to do with socket IO or sockets in general now lives outside of the matchmaker service. So, because we've wrapped that. What we can say is this dot socket service equals socket service. And we can still make use of everything in that socket service, but now we don't have to pass in like stuff that's completely irrelevant to the matchmaker service. So if you're new to the channel, um, the thing we're working on at the moment is a uh, rock, paper, scissors game that uses uh, web sockets. So you can have clients around the world connecting to other people and the server will connect them together and then they can have a game of rock paper scissors and it just shows who wins and who loses so just in case you're new to this so yeah that's passing that in we've now broken that dependency and we don't even need to include anything to do with http or the server or anything really let's see Sorry, there you are. why is that still being used Okay, we still have a socket IO dependency. We may not need that soon, but that's probably part of an extra bit of refactoring that we need to do. That's all pretty good so far. So, oh, that was not meant to go there. So in our server.ts, Block scope variable socket service you used before. It's declaration. Hmm. What have I done wrong there? There we go. It's because I was uh, using the same name for the service as I was using for the module that was important there. So socket service has expects three arguments, but it has two. Because previously we were going to use a callback. So we can remove the callback. 
what we'll do is we'll create a list of listeners instead of just one listener. So that gives us a one to many dependency instead of a one to one. Um, so we'll say this dot listeners equals an array. And what we'll do is right here. And this is going to be an array of functions, which is a very weird thing to write. Feels like a weird thing to write anyway. But this is a, the world we live in, the TypeScript world. Okay, so this dot listeners equals blank array. And then what we will do is add a function called a public function. Let's put those together with the other public functions. Public add listener. And then what we'll do is call listener and we'll say it's a type function. And we'll just say this dot listeners. And we'll add a companion remove listener as well. And we'll just pass the same listener in. And we'll do some kind of lookup. So So all we're going to do here is just uh, say return um, listener equal to these need to be named differently because of scoping. So a listener, current listener. And then if uh, does not remove length more than zero, we will remove that listener. So. I don't know if we actually need to do We should do it in index of instead, I think. Yeah, that's a better way to go. Because it's an array. So, list of listeners dot uh, index of listener we've passed in. If listener to remove more than listener to remove index is more than minus one, listener this dot listeners dot splice. Listener to remove index. One. And that will remove it from the array of listeners. Yeah, so that's pretty good. So this way what we can do, yeah, is basically assign a set of listeners. So if we're gonna do that, what we can do is say this oh, listener dot well, 
I suppose we could reuse that function there. We could say this dot dot listen. Our listener. And then that way all messages are relayed to the calling function, so or the calling object. And then what we probably want to do is remove I think there's a socket to IO dot off, so just to tidy tidy up a little bit. Gonna find out. I might need to do a little bit of Google on there to find out whether you can do that or not. Dot off. Does that is that actually? Socket dot remove listener. Okay, I don't think that's much of an issue at the moment, but keep that one in mind. I suppose if the object doesn't exist anymore, it's probably not listening, but we'll see anyway. Okay, so... Connect. We fire off the connection listener. Okay. Right. So we no longer do anything socket related or fully socket related in the Matchmaker service. We have a socket service for that now, and we're able to add and remove listeners whenever we want. So what we'll do in the matchmaker service, after creating the creating the connection to the socket, we'll add our listener.
and we're going to bind this. So that it uh, has awareness of the scope of our uh, object that calls it. Okay. So I think we're in a good position there. What we're doing is we are injecting socket service into the matchmaker service. The matchmaker service adds a listener saying that I have an interest in reading the function. Or oh, in, in, sorry, in a uh, triggering a function when a player connects. When a player connects, listeners get registered for that player and magic happens. <laughs> yeah, moved a little bit of complexity out of that service. Let's see how it works. And if it indeed works at all. Well, it doesn't crash, <laughs> so that's good. Uh, there we go. Okay, so we'll just refresh this. And for the fun of it, let's connect three players instead of just two. So I'll have mic one, mic two, and mic three. One, two, three. Looks like Mike 1 and Mike 2 have been uh, matched. So we'll give uh, Mike, Mike 3 a friend. Because everybody deserves a friend. There we go. Pretty good. I mean, they're going to match for each other 1 and 2 because. There's no sort of like delay. If there was like loads and loads of queued at players, you get a more random spread of players matching. But if um, there aren't any blank slots, one is going to match with two, and two is going to match with three. Sorry, three is going to match with four. It's just going to happen like that. But that all seems to be working, and the output in the server confirms that. So that's really good. This is what refactoring is about. It's about taking something that works. Oh, yeah, what, what did we get there? Is that a new follower? Thank you, new follower. <laughs> Much appreciated. Um, okay, where are we? Yeah, so that's that's sort of the uh, the, the art of refactoring. You know, it, there, it isn't very flashy. Um, it can be a little bit tedious. But at the end of the day, the code becomes more readable and easier to maintain and test. So what we've done there was taken out most of the uh, socket concerns out of the uh, code and put them into a nice separate service. A few things are still irking me about this, uh, about the way this is written though. So yeah, the main concern of the matchmaker service should be to match players. It makes total sense, total sense to, to match players in here. Um, so we have a, ma a list of unmatched players. And we set a flag on each player to see whether they've been matched or not. That's how we decide whether they have or not. And if there aren't more than, or there aren't two players, then we don't bother doing any matching because you can't match one player to, to themselves. Um, but yeah, I feel like, I feel like this should really be the main part of the, uh, the code and all this other stuff that's happening. Like, yeah, all this kind of stuff should be in a different class. It's just going to be a slow slog while we 
mash away at that marble and <laughs> that's the aim of the game. But once we've done that, once we've done that, next time right, we can design a UI <laughs> and it'll be a little bit more fun to watch. But uh, till next time. <laughs> no, not going yet. So. Hopefully there's not too much uh, airspace in this uh, stream. It's just I'm having to think about how I'm going to do this. Um, I didn't pre-plan this, so... See, there we're actually pushing in the sessions object when the players are matched. And then we're also reporting back to the socket uh, socket IO. Basically reply, reporting back to the clients when a play has been matched. Should that be in this particular part of the code? I don't know. Hey everyone. Um, hope everyone's having a good time. Um, basically, the summary of this is that I am. Um, look at the camera. Look. <laughs> um, I'm just refactoring a the back end for the. Oh, someone's talking. Oh, is that Python? Yeah. Okay. Oh well, this is written in TypeScript. Um, I haven't actually got that much experience with Python, but it is a. It seems to be the, the preferred language that people are using these days to learn programming uh, early on, so um, keep up with that and uh, hopefully you'll uh, become a pro Python programmer one day and hopefully a programmer with other languages. Um, okay, yeah, so yeah, so this is basically uh, sort of the service that matches players together um, for the game of Rock, Paper, Scissors that we have here in uh, Node. Um, and what my uh, concern is is that there's just too much going on in this class and that we need to separate things out and we've already started by removing the socket IO logic and putting it into its own socket service which is then passed into the constructor of this this way you don't have to tell the matchmake service about the port and the application and stuff like that like it just doesn't care it's just something that I had to do before because everything was kind of in the same class. So you want to kind of avoid those monolithic classes. Um, so the concerns we have here are we maintain a list of sessions, we maintain a list of players, um, and we also carry out, we relay uh, game decisions onto the decision maker. So whether that should actually be in the matchmaking service is, a, is another question. Um, so rather than try and affect this, maybe we should try and take everything that isn't matching players and moving it into its own service. So adding sessions and removing sessions. Yeah, let's do this right. Let's move all the stuff that's related to sessions into a session service. Sometimes you've just got to go for it. It might not be correct, but you know, you can figure that out and then if it isn't correct then you go a different way. So Creating our session service, setting up our constructor, and what we'll do is have a list of sessions. I'm going to make it property so I use an underscore. Take session object. Oh, that's not what we want. I want to use a player session. Ah, player session. Game session, yeah. Let's game session. Um, 
and this is actually an array of sessions, so put the array notation there. And we'll say this dot sessions equals blank array. And then I want to do a getter for a given session. Maybe. <laughs> Or we could do some help functions that help methods would let you retrieve a session based on some kind of logic. Um, so let's have a look at the existing code base and find out what we do here. So we do seem to do some kind of index of at the moment here by passing a session in. Okay. Well, it's easy to port this bit of code, so we take this and we'll make that a public member, a public method. Remove session. I think since it's a session service, we can just call it, say, remove. Takes a game session, looks at our list of sessions, and then removes it from the list. And for completeness, let's just return our list of sessions. So we've already taken that. Now what we can do is we can implement session service into our uh, matchmaker service. Again, I'm going to put it in the matchmaker, but I may move it up gradually, move everything up, separate everything out. Think of it like a pizza. And you just gently taking away each piece of pizza and then eating it. <laughs> Analogies. Okay. So we take our type session service. We've created that, and then what we can do remove session instead of having a remove session. See where it's used. We can use the session service to remove it. So it's just gradually prying apart things. That's that's kind of the way way refactoring works. Is you just you look at something and you say, how could this be improved? How can this be improved in the least destructive way possible? And then it's just about taking it, moving it, making sure the code works, making sure that you're not uh, introducing bugs into the code. So this dot session service dot remove. And then what we're doing is still passing a reference into that session. And um, Bob's your uncle. <laughs> So the next thing is to make all references to this dot sessions except so this will be this dot session service dot add session and I think what we'll do here is we'll pass in players. And we will let we will let the session service create it'll do it for us then instead of passing in an object we'll pass in the arguments to create that object and that just creates a weak coupling we may not even have to refer to a session in a, in this code and then which is nice <laughs> So we can implement this. An idea I'm just prying the code apart, prying away the dependencies. That's the idea of it. So you make your code more solid, you know, um top of my head. <laughs> you know, yeah. Separation of concerns. 
uh, the open close principle, um, I think it's Liskov substitution. Um, inversion of control and the last one is a dependency oh, I put myself on the spot here <laughs> the sort of gist of it is you want to re reduce coupling between objects and classes things shouldn't be clumped together in mo as big monoliths they should be replaceable substitutable so you know um, you should be able to pass in things as interfaces so that the each thing has as little knowledge of the other thing as possible. That's sort of the rule of thumb. You want to kind of separate things out so that they're reusable and that they don't really know much about each other. They only know their interfaces. Okay, so... Lost my place there a little bit. List.sessions Filter Remove Ah, yeah, that was it. We we're going to create a new session from these players. So what we can do is go into our session service. Public create new session. And what we'll do is specify player one. And play it to you. And then, yeah, so now what we can do is say uh, new session equals new player in session. So what we're doing is we're taking control away from the matchmaker service of creating sessions. So if we change the implementation of this, we'll have another service that manages it. We don't need to worry about the implementation anymore. So play one and play two. This.sessions push. Adding it to our array of, of active sessions. And then I suppose we'll return it as well. It's always good to add type in as well. There we go. So we use create new session. Alright, so that's now valid. And now we just need to look wherever sessions is used. And just... Uh, we, we can decide whether we want to move the logic that's been used in the sessions out of the matchmaker and into the session service, or we can choose to return a reference to something from the session service. And I would say it's, always, it's usually better to, in the main to delegate whatever thing that you need to use. For example, we're looking at this uh, list of sessions here. Do we need to really know about that list of sessions or can we get away with writing some kind of method that can do the work for us in the other in, in the session service? So that's something to think about. So player sessions. What it seems like we want to do here is return a session for a given set of players. So that can be easily encapsulated in in a function. And instead of having to write all this boilerplate here checking to see if the thing exists or checking the length of an array, we could just return a session. Um, so let's take this. And let's put it into our session service. Yeah, 
You can't see a pattern emerge. We're just asking, we've put in a session for a given set of players, and now we're taking one back out. So we get these nice, consistent, neat interfaces. Equals this dot sessions dot filter. Equal to socket dot id. Mm. Okay. Interesting. Maybe I'm gonna have to have a second read of that. Uh, so we're passing in on and submitted socket ID. Okay. Um, okay, for now we'll add that to the to the function. Yeah, okay, we're gonna have to do that, so Again, I'm, I'm just sort of progressively improving the code um, just by looking at what, what I can take out of this uh, class and put into its own service. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. It, it's kind of, it's a gradual process. So, um, I've realized now that I'm going to have to put a socket IO ID in here instead of just passing them to two players. So... So we're passing the desired socket, and actually, we should probably just make this a string, and that way we don't have to tell this uh, session service about sockets. They don't really need to know about them, so what we can do is change that to a string. And just reference that, so desired socket. And hopefully instead of having to, ah, we haven't changed this yet. Instead of uh, having this, this sort of like code in, in the matchmaking service, it's now been delegated. The responsibility has been delegated to the session service because the session service is concerned with sessions. So we seem to, yeah. So if uh, uh, so, otherwise, we will return the first element in this. So return play sessions zero. And now we can just go back here. Instead of having those filter logic, we can literally just take our uh, session service. And then we just need to pass our players in. Oh, how did we do that? You know what? I should definitely read this better before I uh, edit and undo. Session dot player one session player two. Have I got this completely the wrong way around? I think I have. Okay, that's fine. So what we do is just hit the socket. Yeah, so it's all about making each piece of code only know what, what it needs to know about each other bit of code. That's the gist of it.
yeah, so this is um, erroring because I, I misunderstood the algorithm there. So what we're actually doing is passing in a socket ID. And what we should be doing is saying session dot play one socket. There we go. So yeah, I mean, it, it, the code even reads better now that it's been placed into its own function. So what we're saying is, for a list of sessions, which we have here in the session service, we're going to check through the sessions and any ones that contain the socket ID, be it in the player one or player two, we're going to return that result. And we're going to return the first item. So now when we go to the matchmaker service, all we need to do is say that should actually be get session by socket ID. Change the name of that in the session service. There we go. So now We've uh, simplified the code greatly, so let's see if we're still using this dot sessions anyway. Yeah, we are. So doing a very, very similar thing. Leave and play a session. Basically, see, look, now we can reuse this uh, logic. This is a great thing about uh, moving, sort of uh, separating concerns. You start to see places where there's repetition, and you can reuse things that you've already done, so we've actually just implemented this algorithm um, so we can just lift it out, so we're taking a socket ID so leave and play a session just filter on session yeah we're doing exactly the same thing Leaving play session equals this dot session service dot get session by socket ID, and then what we can do is take socket ID. And there's just a guard around this. And since this returns null or an object now, we can just say if leave and play a session, leave and play a session, go there, leave and play a session, go there. Yeah, so we're just we're just removing some of this like repetitive, dull, boring, redundant code, and putting putting it into its own service. It makes it easier to find. It makes it easier to read. That's what refactoring is about. Like I said, it's not the most glamorous, fun thing to do in the world, but it needs to be done sometimes. So yeah, we still have a check around that. We still have a guard. Let's do a check for this.sessions. So it still exists as an array. Ah, but it's not used anymore. So you can remove it because all of the responsibilities of their sessions has now been removed and delegated to a new service. See that it's, not, it's just not referencing the code anymore. So hopefully, I can't see any uh, red here around here. Everything seems to pass. Let's uh, restart the service and struggle to like I do every time I try and restart the service. So we'll kill the process and start again. Go into our uh, server and. Okay, so we'll do our uh, npm run build. Also, I'm just going to post a link to the repo if anybody would like to contribute or make their own version of this.
But yeah, so if anybody's interested in uh, making their own version of this or uh, cloning this, then feel free to get it from github.com forward slash programmer in progress slash mds dash rock dash paper dash scissors. I'll go play around with it and I'm sure you'll be able to do even better than me. <laughs> even better. Just have fun with it. Okay, so we've built our uh, project and we're going to run it and we're going to see if it all works still. npm start. The great thing as well is now I'm picking this apart, I could do an entire uh, stream about uh, good unit testing. Um, I don't think that's my main priority at the moment, but it might be it might, might be for a good watch. Um, but it's going to be so much easier now because every, all the code's been separated out into these small, manageable services. So, okay, let's give this a go. Okay, so we got mic one, mic two, mic three, and mic four. So one's been matched with two, four's been matched with three. Let's do our moves. Okay, so twos we match the mic for. Oh, I see he hasn't done his move yet. I've confused myself. <laughs> okay, so He's matched mic one. They both lose. They haven't been matched yet. But then now they've been matched with each other again. Yeah, so everything seems to be working, which is great. There's no crashes, um, everything's good. And what have we done? Well, we have taken the responsibilities of session handling and wrapped them into a nice, neat class. So we create sessions, we remove sessions, and we get sessions by socket ID. So again, we're just reducing the complexity in the MashMake service and just reducing a couple of dependencies to make the code more readable, to make it easier to maintain, to make it reusable. We saw here that we had two set of filter functions, which we've now turned into a nice generic filter. So that's the way to do it. And we can just keep chiseling away at this. Okay, so... Like I said, I, th I was going to only make this a, a short stream um, because, well, actually, yeah. So we'll we'll call the uh, the pro a day on the programming um, and sort of move on a little bit. So yeah, I've decided um, it's not going to be a long stream at night. I'll move to uh, face as well. Hi. Yeah. So uh, I've decided not to make this a long stream tonight. Um, I just felt like. Uh, I announced that I was going to do streams every Sunday at 7pm, uh, British summer time. And then as soon as I did that, I was I was uh, absent for three weeks. Um, various reasons. Uh, we had a... Well, I wasn't near a computer with internet one week. Um, I was out celebrating my birthday another week. And uh, another time I was just too busy to, to do on Sunday. So um, I'm hoping to make this a frequent, regular fixture. Hope she was having fun... Fun streams coming up, like designing the UI for the, for the uh, Rock Paper Scissors game. Um, we might do one on uh, unit testing uh, and testability. Um, I'm going to try and refactor this a little bit more in off stream because I appreciate that this isn't uh, all that fun. It's kind of a bit repetitive, but it's, it's something to show, you know. Um, but yeah, and hopefully there'll be other projects in the pipeline. So uh, yeah, I'm going to hopefully keep doing this. Um, and there'll be less, hopefully less gaps and longer streams. Um, but I'm going to call it a day now, um, at an hour and a half. Um, I hope everybody has enjoyed the stream um, and uh, hope to see you next time. So thanks, everybody. Also, also before I go, uh, feel free to check out my uh, channel, Programmer in Progress on YouTube. Um, 
and look at my uh, uh, GitHub repository or my GitHub um, list of repositories at uh, Programmer in Progress. This is Programming in Progress channel and uh, once again it's been great to see everybody and I hope everybody, somebody's learned. I hope that everybody's learned something from this um, and I will see you next time.